James Hilder for Apple TV in association with Matt Jim Marbao. I'm at the Muhammad Ali exhibition today at the O2 Arena. We're here ahead of the event this weekend, the Seni Expo, Seni 2016, also in a little bit of the Bellator involved with the Seni as well. Joined by none other than Joe Long. How are you, Joe? I'm good, James. How are you? Good. I'm all right. It's been a little while since we caught up, mate. I, I know. Thinking. It's got to be at least probably four or five months. How have you been keeping? Good. You look, you look like you've been in the gym, mate. You, you've been in the gym and you've, cat. And, 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 you, and you've grown the hair. I don't know what's going on. I, 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 like I like it, I like it. It's looking, it's looking, it's looking good. Here we are. Talk to me a little bit about this Seni. It said it's always been a great experience coming along to the Seni events from probably 2012 onward. What, what's different from this year to what we've not seen in, in years gone by? Sure, I, I think you, was, you guys were there 2010, I think. Could, could have been. Uh, this year is a big one because we've got a big cherry on the cake, really, with the, uh, the Bellator show on the Saturday evening in the main arena. So that, that is what, what today's about. Uh, you know, we've we've got a press day today uh, in association with Bellator, okay. uh, and uh, on the weekend they have Lennox Lewis uh, coming along to their show, and also to the Cine show in the fan zone. So it's a uh, it's a bit of a mixed bag. So you've got the arena show in the evening, and then during the daytime, both Saturday and Sunday, you've got the Cine show, the combat and strength show, running all weekend across all different areas of the O2. So. We have the fan zone in all bar one. We have Indigo running all weekend. We have Brooklyn Bowl running all weekend. And we also have our exhibition in the Piazza running all weekend. So we, we've got a bit of work going on this weekend. Interesting enough, I know you've got Lennox Lewis down. He's sort of doing the fan zone stuff as a guest. Sure. It's, it's intriguing the amount of heavyweight boxers that do come along to the sort of semi events in past years. Who, yeah. who have you sort of had come along in past years? Though? The well, the, the big one was when, when David Hay uh, had a little altercation with Klitschko at Semi on that. the stairs. That, in yeah. fact, they used it for the, uh, for the intro to, the, uh, to their world title fight. So uh, David and Klitschko was brilliant. We've had Tim Witherspoon's been to the show before. Uh, a lot of uh, more domestic heavyweights have been to the show before as well. But uh, you had on Dillian a world White level, fighting one year, did you? The open did, did did it, no, Dylan done a, an, an exhibition. He done an open training session okay. back back okay. when we was uh, working with Dillian. He done an open training session. That's when he he, he went a superstar, you know. But uh, <laughs> no, he, he done an open training session, and yeah, I, I've lots of boxers. You know, Colin McMillian. Uh, Derek Williams, Derek Chisura done an open training session before the uh, David Hay fight. I remember sparring Dylan at the um, Seni, I think it was 2011 maybe, or 210. 210 probably, yeah. Exhibition, yeah. yeah. Right? And I, and oh, you, you sparred me not to hurt him, take it easy with him. <laughs> Obviously, because I'm a big lad and that. <laughs> don't sort of... He, uh, don't I think, out, I think he sparred like a silly amount of uh, uh, rounds that day. He, he was sparring with kids. Rounds. That was it. Yeah, you know, he'd he done, he done good that day. That's right. I'll he, wait I, until like round 98 and then I'll leash the pain on him. Then, then, then you jumped on him. Then I jumped on him. So, yeah, no, David and uh, the David Hay and Klitschko altercation happened at the show. So that was, that, that was, uh, that was interesting. Someone uh, I want to come on to who's been absolutely on brilliant form of late, Michael Bisping. Congratulations on his win. As yeah, you know, he's done very well. I said I'm not the most knowledgeable on the UFC MMA scene and I don't yeah. pretend to be, but every yeah. time we've met Bisping in your company, he's yeah. been great with us, great with the channel. Oh, so he's, he's, he's a great guy. fantastic to see him achieve his dreams. He's a great guy and also Michael's been a regular at the show, you know. Uh, this year he's more about Bellator than UFC because of, of their arena show, so Michael's not there this year, but his win was brilliant. And uh, just about to announce UFC are just about to announce his uh, his his fight, which will be which will be in the UK, will be in Manchester so you can later on this year. Will be in Manchester this week, right? Yeah? Yes, correct. Yeah. So so confirmed. It will be in the UK this year. Yeah. There we go. There we go. You let's, might have a bit of an exclusive there, Jim. Let's talk a little bit about who we can expect to see this year at the Seni. Obviously, mm -hmm. we know we've got Lennox Lewis there. We've got a few other people floating around. What, what's going to be Correct. going on? Correct. Uh, Fan-wise, uh, Bellator-wise, obviously, you've got the, the whole card with, with Bellator, which is an amazing card. Uh, Michael Venom Page and Paul Daly uh, both being... Uh, uh, and Matt Matrione on the top of that card. Uh, in the fan zone, we've got Hoist Gracie. We've got Tito Ortiz. Obviously, Lennox Lewis, we just men mentioned, and we've got Fedor, uh, which is an amazing... We've always wanted to get Fedor to the show, uh, and to have him in the fan zone for the Bellator uh, fan zone in the show is, is amazing for us. I'd like to get... I'm still talking to Mick Hennessy. I'm trying to get Tyson Fury along here this weekend, 
Whether or not that happens, we don't know. Uh, but uh, I'm going to be, be on, I'm going to be on the phone to Mick on Thursday, Friday. Have you got a personal message to Mick and Tyson Fury? Yeah, pull your finger out, Mick. Pull down. your finger out, Mick. Let's make it happen. <laughs> I, I'd love, I'd love to get into the show because he's such a, he's such a, he's a, a fan favorite. He's really. a fan favorite, you know. And I've tried to get him to the show many a times, but Mick's always so busy. In fact, uh, Mick's son, little Michael, competed at last the last show in the amateur boxing. So, uh, you know, Mick's been there, there with, with his son, and his, son, his son's competed at the show. We've got uh, uh, skills bouts happening on the Sunday afternoon, again, with Brawl Sports, uh, with Body Shots Gym. So that's happening on the Sunday afternoon in the Piazza area as well. So. I know Lee and the lads from Body Shots are good people doing a fantastic job, and it's great yeah. that Senny involves all these sort of different aspects of the mixed martial arts and boxing world, and everybody gets yeah. to come together for a good weekend, and it's a good, it's yeah, a good it's time to swap sort of ideas and concepts and of what course. works and what's not working. It, it's of great for the, for the sport to cross pollinate, isn't it? Definitely, and I think it's here, it's been, it's been hard operationally, it's been quite hard getting our show under this tent, uh, because this isn't an exhibition centre as such. XL, NEC are exhibition centres, you know. This is like a live event centre. Uh, so we've had some operational issues, but, you know, everything's now in place and we're looking forward to a great weekend. I think it'll be a bit more festival-like, James, because you've got so many restaurants as you walk through. You know, you've got so many restaurants and so many different areas you can walk into and walk out of, you know, and we've got so many different venues under the roof which we're utilising. You know, I think it would be a good like, sort of festival atmosphere this weekend. Obviously, the, the so-called sort of main event of the Bellator show was meant to be James Colossus v Kimbo Slice. Correct. Obviously, with the unforeseen tragic situation of Kimbo Slice, unfortunately, yeah. passing away. Yeah. How has that sort of affected the show? And will there be sort of any anything to sort of remember Kimbo on, on the night? Of the night? I, I, I believe uh, Scott Coker uh, will be doing something. They, they uh, Bellator have done a... A special on Spike TV uh, a few weeks ago, so I don't know if they'll be sort of repeating that on the night. Possi very, very possibly will be. But yeah, it was tragic. I mean, you know, it's affected the show. It's had a knock-on effect. Of course, it has. You know, when, when's the last time you heard of a main event? You know, someone that's competing on a main event on a big show pass. I, I, I've never heard it in you know in in my lifetime within the sport. You know, and we've been promoting for nearly 20 years now, so. You know, it was a shocker, absolute shocker. I mean, talking about Michael Bisping, I, I was out for Michael's fight, got on a plane to come home on the uh, Monday, landed in London on the Tuesday, and was Kimbo was actually due in London that day, uh, and he'd passed from my flight from LA back to the UK. So I got off the phone, put my, got off the plane, put my phone on, and it was like hundred odd messages. Like my phone just blew up. Uh, and he was due for press week in London that week. In fact, you you was you was going to be be seeing him that week, and it was just I, I couldn't believe it. You know, when you you read something and you it's like is this, is this real? Is this is this really happening? So I went from like a high of being with Michael, you know, fight week and the weekend, winning a title and jumping off the plane, thinking we had a week of press with Kimbo, and gone. But it just shows you how precious life is, you know, and it makes you think. You know, you know, we should all, all treasure every day, day we're here, you know. Just to want to talk a little bit about boxing, if you like, at the moment. We've seen some massive fights being made. Firstly, Liam Smith defending his WBO world title against Sol Canelo Alvarez. Yeah. Massive, massive fight. And yeah. it just shows the, the size of the pair of balls on Liam Smith, the fact that he will defend against someone like Alvarez. What was your initial thoughts when that fight was made? Well, I, I, I made a clangor because I think my last interview with you, I, I, I said I was going with Amir. So, you know, I, I, I've lost on that one, haven't I? So, you know, do, do, I, do I go go the other side and go with Alvarez? But no, I mean, it's a great fight. And, you know, it's, it, we, know what, we know what he's got uh, and we know how he fights, don't we? And, and, and hats off to Smith, you know, for, for taking the fight and going there. I've also recently seen the unbelievable saga of Eubank, GGG and then yep. Kel Brook thrown into the mix. We all thought 99% GGG Eubank Jr. would be done. Correct. He's then Eddie Holmes thrown a curveball in. Dead yep. diamond set. It wasn't met. He's then made the fight between Golovkin and Kel Brook here at the O2 Arena where we stand now. Right now. Yeah. Yep. So what, what was your initial thoughts for that plot twist? Uh, I'll probably keep them thoughts to myself on that one. <laughs> I'll keep my thoughts to, to myself. But you know what it does do? It leads for a great follow-up fight, doesn't it? You know, especially if Brooke wins. 
if Brook wins, then you know, you, you, ba see, you bank Brook. Can you see Brook winning? Is, is that who you're going to go with on this? I, I see that as a 50 50 fight. You know, I do see it as a 50 50 fight because the, re the reason I. Do you think it will fit Brook? How do you think you'll handle that? Well, he, he, he's big at his weight anyhow, isn't he? But what, what I like about Brook is his self belief. You know, he seems such a. a, a, a he seems so mentally strong and, and mentally fairly level. You know, I think there, there's a difference with being uh, mentally strong and being arrogant and ignorant towards what you can achieve. And I think you get a lot of fight, you know, all due respect, some fighters are like that. They say this, they say that, and yes, they're confident, and, and, and yes, they're, they have the ability, but then their mind goes. But I, I actually believe Kel Brook has got a very good balance in the way he is as an athlete. Do you think potentially then the, the Eubank fight could, could happen for the winner, either GGG or Kelbrook? I'd, I'd love to see that. I'd love to see that. I, I would love to see that. What I wouldn't like to see is for Eubank to be left out in the cold. You know, that's what I wouldn't like to see. But I believe he's got he's got one more fight on his contract with Matchroom, right? I believe so. I do believe so. so. I don't so, know how that negotiation has just happened will affect him going forward. That's so is that story the, in itself, isn't it? We that's right. Well, that, 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 that's, I was actually having this discussion earlier uh, with someone. Where does that leave that? Exactly that. And it must be hard for Eddie's point of view to then try and promote him to the public in a British title defence when what so much water under the bridge. He's, he's definitely international level, isn't he? he I, I think he's I above domestic so. level. Obviously, he's proved his domestic uh, worth, if he wants I, to I believe. Win that sort of British title out, which I think was the sort of plan before the GGG situation. It's sure. interesting to see who, who they announce as he's next. Yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely, definitely. If you was him, would you want to be now on an undercard for, say, say he was on the undercard of Brook and GGG? Is that... When's Joshua's next fight? I'm not asking, I'm not breaking the news by the way. Just right. wait and see well, what yeah, yeah. How would you as a promoter deal with someone like English? As, as a man who deals with negotiations for a living? I couldn't deal with him. No. I couldn't deal with him. Too much. Could not deal with him. Would not want to know. Too busy. Phone's going down. He seems a lovely man. You know, uh, Chris Eubank Senior seems a lovely man, but as far as what I take from it, I couldn't, me personally, I couldn't deal with someone like that. I couldn't do it. You know, there, there's a lot of people within, within the industry what we've had the opportunity to work with, and unfortunately we was busy that day. <laughs> so, no, I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't personally do it. Unless you're doing that 24-7, like... Frank Warren is and Eddie Hearn is 24-7 and they're on it but I'd, I'd find that hard work I think you, you've got to have a chemistry with someone haven't you yeah. I'm, I'm not saying that, that he's, he, he, he's a bad person or anything I'm just saying his chemistry for me as a person I don't think I could deal with it because I think it'd be too many questions too many headaches too many hours too much moving the goalposts and I, I, I couldn't deal with it Empathy not for Eddie me. Hearn, empathy for Eddie yeah, Hearn, and respect for the way he's, he's sort of made it work for him and his company, if you like. One hundred percent. You know, hats off and, and, and salute him. But every everything gets to an end, doesn't it? You know, with, with something like that, it, it it ends up putting a lot of pressure on on the relationship. You know, I, I you know I've had conversations with Mick Hennessy previously. You know uh, about athletes. You know, you know we, we we've not always. You know, we've worked with different athletes before. You know, Dillian being one. You know, and our fallout with Dillian wasn't that great. You know, but it's hard. You know, when emotions and passion are involved with the sport, it's not that easy. What I've got to say, in your sort of split with Dillian, you both acted with a lot of decorum. We've not seen sort of any niggling stories or anything broke. It wasn't sort of known it's been quite dramatic hasn't it yeah well I'm, listen I've, I know I've known Dillian since he was 15 years old you know I, you know, I treat Dillian like family uh, he, he's made a decision that he didn't need a manager and he's done his own thing you know since then he's made other changes to what to his career it's up to him you know he, you know, he's, he's got to go and do, do what he wants to do you know I don't agree with them you know, and, and I, I've got beliefs in where he's going and how he's doing things. But that, now that's none of my business. That's down to him and, and his new team. 
on, on, on what they're doing. So, you know, life goes on. My life's not going to stop because of Dylan White, and I'm sure his life's not going to stop because I'm not, I, you know, I, I'm no longer managing him. You know, that's down to him, and we'll see in the long run. If, as I said, if you're watching this, come down to Senny this, this weekend, Saturday, this weekend, this Saturday and Sunday. Bring the family. Yep. Come down, get involved. Buy a katana sword. It's going to be great. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be absolutely great. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a good one. But if you if you want to see Lennox, uh, he's part of the Bellator well, fan Lennox zone. Lewis will be in the fan zone when? On Saturday afternoon at four o'clock. But you need to get online combatandstrength.com uh, and get your tickets to the Bellator fan zone. Because if you're just coming to the show on its own, you won't be able to get in and see him. Because it'll be Chocker. It'll be Chocker. And also, he will obviously be in the Bellator show on the Saturday night for the, for the main event in the arena. So, long. I wish you the best of luck with the Semi Expo. Lovely, James. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks for everything. Thanks, soon.